At the outset, I would like to thank the organizers, particularly Dr. Onil K. Garg, for giving us the opportunity on behalf of our institute, IISWBM. And the presentation has the following highlights, a background, a present scenario, compliance of renewable energy with energy efficiency applications, and case study, and way forward. So our institute, the background comes from this, that uh, we have been there as the first management education institute in India, rated now A1+, plus, and the energy management program since 1993. And we have other uh, programs, as you are seeing, and we have the energy conservation day observance since uh, 2000. The 16th one will be organized on 14th of December, 2015. Uh, while uh, doing such uh, in, involved in these activities, we have also been doing some research and consultancy and field level activities. And there we have whatever experience we have gathered. Uh, on the basis of that, we are going to present uh, this. Uh, ex ex on the basis of that experience, I am going to present this study. So uh, this is a well known uh, presentation uh, work by United Nations showing the different countries of the world. Uh, and uh, on the x-axis, we are having the annual per capita electricity use. And y-axis is the human development index based on the literacy rate, GDP, and such and such other issues. Now, uh, we are uh, all trying to be developed countries. And we see that the developed countries are in the blue have uh, electricity use more than the not so developed countries like India and China have electricity use less than 2000 kilowatt hour uh, per head per year. Whereas most of the developed countries, they have electricity use ranging from 4000 to 14,000 or even 18,000 kilowatt hour. So uh, for development, we need electricity. But at the same time, it is also a revealing fact that this electricity requirement may not necessarily consumption may not necessarily increase the development. Maybe up to about 4,000, it has a significant role. But beyond 4,000 kilowatt hour, uh, more increment of electricity is not giving a real or uh, a useful return on development in the way of development. So, th and uh, that is the point that if India and China follow the average path of attaining development by, say, a uh, per capita electricity use of, say, 8,000 on an average, uh, then uh, that into the number of population of India and China, we shall get some figure, astronomical figure. And that much coal, oil, or even renewable energy available may not be uh, exploitable uh, on this earth. We need another earth. But uh, if we follow the uh, trend, uh, which so-called um, an efficient trend, and uh, proper use of renewable energy, many countries have shown. And uh, so if we can attain development at a, say, a per capita electricity use of 2,000 kilowatt hour, then uh, it will be possible to even uh, become developed with the available resources that we are having in this earth. So th with these two observations, we further uh, see a recent study by American Council for Energy Efficient Economy. In 2012 data, that they have rated different countries of the world. And this is the scorecard on energy efficiency, where we see that USA is even behind uh, some countries uh, of uh, Europe, which we have seen that UK had a much better. In the previous United Nations study also revealed the same thing, that UK, Italy, and uh, Germany, those countries, they have a much better utilization of energy in a way that they perhaps are more energy efficient, which is also proven and are corroborated by this study. Now, this leads us to a obvious uh, solution, perhaps, that we have to manage our demand through energy efficiency and conservation. And at the same time, we have to enhance the supply or utilization of renewable energy resources to make up the dwindling uh, resources of fossil fuel. 
and that is in home we are seeing that the use of renewable energy is increasing at a rocketing okay thank you and uh, there is a uh, increment of rising uh, investment and rising uh, capacity building in terms of renewable energy and uh, this reveals two things that the investment is if we consider a 60 percent vlf on an average the investment will be about 30 crores of rupees per megawatt uh, whereas there is an investment for conventional power at similar plf coal waste thermal power station say five crores uh, rupees five crores per megawatt whereas in case of renewables the fuel cost is almost absent and the challenges are that high initial investment grid parity is going to be achieved maybe in near future manufacturing the system still depends on fossil fuels initial manufacturing we can still require fossil fuels to manufacture the even the renewable energy systems a similar uh, incremental trend is there in case of energy efficiency this is taken from the bureau of energy efficiency studies and we can see that year wise the increment in energy savings that has been attained by indian industries number of indian industries and uh, if we sum up the result two three highlighting points are there that the simple payback period is 1.4 years that is the indian industry practice here for energy efficiency projects the equivalent capacity avoided through this energy efficiency project over these 14 years is 3581 megawatt uh, because of that savings and that investment per avoided capacity is less than one crore per megawatt which is a really very interesting proposition with compared to the investment which is required for capacity addition however the challenges are that these are only reducing the energy consumption fossil fuel consumption partly so what we need in india also is a marriage between the two a hand holding of renewable energy and energy efficiency and that is happening in energy conservation building code where we are finding that uh, maximization of natural energy resources are being uh, there scope for that that provision is also there for efficient energy effic efficient use of energy and in transport just also we have seen that efficient uh, vehicles are run on biodiesel or ethanol and in industry we are seeing uh, new technologies are coming up which are able to be run on renewable energy one such technology is that here a case is presented for vapor absorption cooling system the, uh, this is going to be presented as a paper in world uh, energy engineering congress in orlando usa end of next month uh, but some of the figures can be presented here that the baseline case uh, shows that the initial investment would be for a 33 tr vapor absorption machine would be about 28 lakhs of rupees whereas the life cycle cost would be about 207 lakhs of rupees the co2 emission through this uh, you know, life cycle uh, through the whole life of such system will be though they uh, they use only one seventh of uh, vapor compression system but still they have uh, one seventh electricity but still if we consider that electricity is taken from the grid then uh, from the grid emission ratio we can calculate that this will be the total emission of one such system 49 uh, 4,92,000 kg of co2 now the intervention case that if that system because already the consumption of electricity is reduced to one seven now if we run that on in, uh, renewable energy alone waste heat for the uh, supplying the heat and photovoltaic for the little bit of electricity it require then the total life cycle cost becomes uh, more but not much more 234 lakhs of rupees but co2 emission is almost avoided and uh, almost uh, zero and so this is the average reduction of co2 emission uh, corresponding to that reduction if we consider the incremental cost then the uh, cost that is required to be uh, for the uh, carbon payment 
comes out to be around 3,193 per tons of CO2 emission. Uh, so this cost, though, in terms of the recent uh, trading, uh, international trading value, this is little higher side. But still, we can say that when th uh, this is all calculated based on the uh, grid reliability, when grid reliability is very high. But actually, the cases, the grid reliability is not very high, and particularly the cases where grid reliability is low, this cost will become much, much, much lower. So that study is being done and uh, will be presented here. And so ultimately, the way forward is this message that integrated approach towards promotion of energy efficiency and conservation and renewable energy applications and uh, through energy audit as well as renewable energy assessments. What in our country is happening that energy audit when we do, because we are now learning and now we are trying to improve upon that, but what happens normally that when we go for energy audit, we only look at the energy conservation part, com almost completely ignoring the renewable energy utilization opportunity. For example, in uh, industry, they have the said uh, workshop. So the slopes in most of the cases when we are having a diff this little bit of different approach, then we are finding uh, many slopes, uh, many sets are having slopes towards south. So it is an ideal case for installation of solar rooftop system, but uh, does not require much knowledge or much training for the energy auditor to do. But just because of our ignorance or maybe some kind of mental uh, setup, we do not do that. Okay, so my time is going to be up. Similarly, for renewable energy assessment also, there should be a uh, scope for studying that how much is scope for saving. And with this, I acknowledge uh, that uh, our institute, particularly our students' contribution in this work, uh, for BE, Dr. Ajay Mathur and Mr. K.K. Chakravarti. For MNRE, where I have taken a lot of help from Mr. V.K. Jain. And also, of course, last but not least, the organizers, particularly Dr. Anil, Chan C. Garg, Anil K. Garg, for his support and uh, facility provided. And uh, this is a message from Swami Vivekananda, which may be relevant here. From the West, we have to learn the science of physical nature while on the other hand, the West has to come to us to learn the and assimilate religion and spiritual knowledge. Thank you very much.